Uh, this is super cool. I'm, I'm like be over the moon elated to have this gentleman uh, in the basement on Bull in the Basement. Bill Center, Mitch Morse joins us. Great to see you, pal. How are you, man? I'm good, Bull. How's the cat doing? Uh, the, that cat's okay. <laughs> Glad to hear, pal. I'm yeah. No, it's all good. She she went through a little procedure. We got her on a new diet and you know some drugs and stuff. But uh, we're getting through. We're, she's she's an old lady. She's sixteen. But oh, uh, wow. yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, my good. It's glad to hear. It. I'm sorry we had to reschedule, but I'm glad you got to take care of business, man. You got to take care of business. Hell yeah, hell yeah. And and you got a super cool family. How's the baby? We were just talking before we started to record. You're like, I'm just being a dad. Yeah, it's uh. I have a lot of help with my wife and uh, I'm just trying to be as supportive as possible and do as much as I can. Um, it's a blast. It's a blessing. It's a privilege. And uh, all three. So um, really enjoying it right now. So for folks that don't know, uh, Mitch and I, I think we met like at a bandits game or something years ago. And uh, we did a thing through feed more Western New York, all inspired by you. You gave a hundred K to feed more during COVID and, and you are the most humble guy on the planet. And there, you really didn't really want to talk about it on the radio. And you did. And it was great. And that inspired us to raise even more. So we got up to a quarter million dollars yeah, with Match true. Mitch for Feed More. And that was awesome. But it was because of what you – you got the ball rolling. So um, thank you for that. Um, yeah, of course. It was awesome. So I got to ask you this. Um, you went to Catholic school. So did I. Um Lots of people are practicing here in Western New York. So two questions. Um, and I'm not going to get churchy out of you at all. Oh, please. No, this is great. <laughs> this is great. Uh, what'd you give up for Lent? What did I give up for Lent? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm more of the addition than the subtraction on Lent ever since that was given to me as a choice. Right. <laughs> Just because I feel like I can like, be more dedicated to add it, addition than subtraction. Um so really right now is I've never really been into, uh, you know, I, I'm just trying to find a website where I can go through kind of the readings of the day. And then from there, just trying to, because some of it's so, I mean, over my head, even the message of it, I get so lost in just trying to read it and not conceptually understand it that you lose the message of it. So just kind of getting the reading of the day and then conceptually understanding what it means. And I know that's also uh, up for interpretation in some things. So um really just trying to do that and then my wife's also a good sounding board we have a good 30 minutes in the morning where it's just us two we conscientiously put the uh phones away and just kind of chat about certain things so that was really cool good for you that is awesome man nobody does that and i mean what 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 have you taken away from that experience that you could share with other people as to why it's so good uh well first of all i think those 30 minutes of the day um, I, I, I wish I, we had done it earlier, just putting the phones aside. It's so easy to get enveloped in these things. And, uh, believe me, I'm the first to tell you that I get enthralled with what's going on. Very good at, they're very good at catching my attention. Uh, and I'm easily, uh, taken away from what's going on in the present sometimes if I'm not conscientious of taking care of it. Um, I mean, it really is just something I've never done to be honest. And what it does is it just sets aside, especially if you have someone to do it with, like which my wife has been super cool about. She's doing her own thing, but she's very supportive of this. Um, and it, it just gets you, I mean, I'm, it's just to be honest, there's a lot of these readings I've, you know, I went to Catholic school and all this stuff. It's either something you haven't read in years or it's a message you haven't heard. And I don't know about you, but when I'm at mass and sometimes they give the homily, uh, it seems to be pertinent for exactly what I'm going through at that moment. It's weird and kind of eerie. And a few of those have been prevalent in, in these readings. So very cool. Um, something that's, uh ever ever changing and um just excited to have that moment in the day yeah it's weird because um i'm way older than you you may not know that but i'm i'm trying to do the math i'm 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 old enough to probably be your dad which is, sounds really weird wow. so what, what i would tell you is um because it sounds like you, you you're into it like i was at your age and I've sort of kind of fallen off the wagon, and and part, I have a little bit of regret when it comes to that. But oh no, dude, believe so, me, I've I've fell off the wagon hard. I mean, I don't know if it, it's if we're being speaking frankly, um, it's tough. It's just, uh, especially the faith life when uh, just balancing both. It's and especially when you're so you know the family comes around, and then you're working, and 
um, it's easy to lose that part of the day. And I'm not going to be here and tell you I'm the kind of guy you want to come up to and ask for spiritual advice. I'm just not. It's something I'd like to do. I can give you advice. <laughs> um, now, I think, you know, morality is guided by spirituality. Um, but it's something that I'm trying to consciously make a, a step back into, especially with having kids. You want them, you know, I'm sure you have the same feeling of, I, I have these very fond memories of sharing uh, moments, faith-based moments with my family. And I don't want that lost. My my wife is comes from a very Catholic family as well. So, um, yeah, dude, believe me, I'm not like a, I'm, I'm trying to be a lot better than I have been. Um, but it's easy. It's, it's hard. It's hard. And I think that's what makes it so um, interesting and such a challenge that it can be, it can be fun at times. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So piggybacking on the whole Lenten thing is you grew up in Texas. Obviously you're in Kansas city. Now you went to Missouri for college, all of that fish fries. Are those things there? Like they are uh, here? Well, yeah, I would say they are uh, much more prevalent even up here um and in texas uh they're, they're still i mean you know when lent's coming around when mcdonald's and wendy's are all they're, <laughs> they're doing their, their fish fillet sandwiches and uh, you know it's that time of year but uh absolutely uh huge moments and i know my wife has very fond memories of her church's fish fries being a social uh, you know social event um so you know that's another thing i'm really looking forward to uh, you know, as the years progress, having those moments with my family, but absolutely, no yeah. doubt about it. Okay, all right. So, is it is it just for you the fish fry standard, like just battered haddock or cod? Do you have a choice? Well, I gotta tell you, I'm allergic. So, oh. the good Lord blessed me with with an out, and uh, and gave me. So, I just still smack smack me. And once I'm done playing football, I made this conscientious, you know, this this kind of pact with my family and the good Lord that. Um, I'll fast and make up through not, you know, starving myself in those days. But, um, you know, may, see, that's that's just you and me being imperfect, right? Right. Faith life. So we're 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 work we're works in the progress. <laughs> uh, all right, let's let's move on. Uh, Mitch Morris, of course, the fantastic Bill Center. We're, we'll obviously talk some bills and talk some football. But I want to like the purpose of what I do on this is to to tell people stories about the people I'm interviewing or have them tell their story because people know you're a football player and you're in the Bills center and you were a pro bowler and you played at Kansas city, yada, yada, yada. They know all that stuff, but this is the whole purpose is this to get more background into you. So I want to know when you were a kid, were you always the biggest kid or did you, did you at some point become the biggest kid? Uh, that's a good question. You know, it's one of those things that you ask 10 people are going to have 10 or you know, nine different stories. Maybe one overlaps. But for me, um, I was always kind of tall and scrawny. Uh, and then the and then I found Chipotle at a very young age in high school. And swear to God, I found Chipotle. And between my uh, my sophomore and junior summer, that summer between, I gained like 50 pounds. And uh, I went from – I made the lateral move from JV quarterback to – left tackle on the offensive line just because i'm like coach listen dude, I, my buddies are starting to play varsity i had these visions of grandeur no one wants to grow up being an offensive lineman and i was this jv receiver quarterback and i, I was i was horrible it's terrible but you know you, you you think highly of yourself and i'm like you know what i'm at a point where i just want to play football please i just want to play ball i want to have fun uh, it's just something i want to do and so they moved me to offensive line where they had a need and uh and fortunately i have never looked back and it's been a it's been a part of my life. Isn't it funny? Like everybody wants to be the skill guy, right? No, not a person on earth wants to grow up being an <laughs> offensive line. Um, I mean, yeah, go over there and line up on the line, you tub of butter. Like no one wants to do that, and and that's okay. I think that's also puts uh, it. That's why we're usually a self deprecating bunch, right? That's why usually you have to have a, a fairly good personality. Um, if people take themselves too seriously as offensive linemen, you don't trust them and you don't like them. Everyone, <laughs> everyone takes themselves. I mean, everyone's got – every offensive lineman has self-deprecating uh, characteristics. I, I've been around a lot of them. I mean, I, I was doing Bill's Radio when, like, Wood was there and, and Levitri and, and some of those guys. And, oh, my God. You are 100% spot on. I mean, they were practical jokers. They would pull – I mean, I can't even say some of the stuff they used to do no, with each no, other. No uh but man oh man they they were like easily the funnest guys on the team like they they they, were, they might not have been the the loudest funnest guys on the team but man if you knew them and some of the stuff they yeah. did and were capable of holy cow those guys were i mean 
I mean, you look at our offensive line. Football in general is a cultural melting pot, right? You have different demographics, different places you grew up from, you know, all this stuff. And you come together collectively as a group. And, I mean, our offensive line is a perfect microcosm of that. You come from guys from, you know, Dion, who is a huge personality, still can be very self-deprecating, <laughs> to guys who don't say much. Still, dep- it's, it's like it, everything, guys might be up and down here, but the one characteristic they have is they're not afraid to – bust each other's chops and and especially themselves 100 percent. okay so you go to the offensive line you eventually get get good so i i gotta tell a quick story for myself so i was a freshman in 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 high school same same deal man i just wanted to play and i wasn't very good at anything and i was in kind of a weird size i was a little small and i was too slow really to play running back it's really what i wanted to do and um actually i um the, the, the one coach said, when we played a, an unbalanced line, which is unheard of, but we played an unbalanced line. So they, they put me at right tackle. Now I'm like 5'5", five, five, like 145 pounds, which is ridiculous. Leverage would, machine. Oh, man. Well, true. That's a good point. <laughs> but I didn't know how to use it, and I really didn't want to play there. And I'll never forget this one time we're in a game, and this kid across from me was probably six foot 180. And he puts me on my back and stomped on me with his cleats right on my chest. He owned me. This happens to all of us, man. That's a terrible feeling. <sighs> it doesn't make terrible it any feeling. better. I get it. I get it. It and, doesn't make it any better. And thank the Lord, I think it might have been that play. The only play that the coach was actually watching me where he saw that happen. He goes, we got to move that kid. We, we cannot leave him on that island and let him get stopped like that. So he made me a running back, and that's what I was for the rest of my life. And I was still not very good. But it was a lot more fun and where I probably should have been anyway. So you get to offensive line and you start getting good, right? I mean, like you mentioned sophomore, junior year, you get there and you're, so did, when did you get good? Like, like good enough where people were really watching you? Well, I mean, it's, it's tough to say it. I still have pause to say you're good, right? It's just, I, it's just one of those things. Um, I, I feel like I really caught, you know, some steam, you know, caught my footing in offensive line uh, at the end of that sophomore year, just through repetitions. Yeah, and um, and then really kind of made some headway. I really felt myself kind of grow into, uh, you know, just a little bit bigger of a body, being able to move people a little bit more. Probably my junior year, that might have actually been my best year of football to be honest in high school. Um, so that was just a lot of fun. It was a sweet spot. Had a good time, and then from there uh, is when everything kind of picked up traction. So was your recruiting video just you of absolutely destroying people like pancake after pancake or just hitting a guy second level driving a guy into the ground was that what you're recruiting i would i would say my my junior year uh it um highlights were a little bit more uh probably probably just can we catch your eye a little bit more than my senior year ones um it wasn't like total it no it wasn't just like busting dudes up but it was pretty good i mean it was good enough to to catch some uh some headwinds around the nation which was you know at the time i never as, as a football player to be honest as i progressed it wasn't like i had this dream i was chasing it was just at the time i was really trying to have fun playing uh and then that next step became available and the same thing with college i never had visions of playing professional football i never had um, but it was just kind of something that became available to me just through trying to be the best team that I could working hard, all that cliche stuff, but it's the truth of it. So, uh, when I had the opportunity to pay for school, I was pretty cool. And then, uh, and then I just found out that Missouri was the best fit for me and I'd do it a hundred times over. Yeah. Uh, so Texas high school football, is it what everybody says it is? I went to a small little private school and we had our own little league of private, small private school. Yeah. But yeah, I would say it absolutely is. Um, I mean, you go to those towns uh, that are uh, depicted in some of these movies. It's, it's off the script, man. I mean, they're closing down shops. It's really, really cool, cool vibe. You know, there's some of these really old rivalries. I can only speak for an Austin, like saying like, it's like Austin High versus Westlake High School. I mean, those two would just get after it, and they'd go to this place called House Park, and it would just be a, it would go off, man. It was just cool. That's awesome. Um, so when you moved to the line, was it you were comfortable with that, right? You were okay with it. You didn't do it begrudgingly. You did it because you kind of had to, right? 
Totally. I mean, it was my second year playing football. I didn't play football until high school. I just knew that what I was doing at the time wasn't going to not pan out, but I just wasn't having fun. Not, you know, I wanted to be involved. I wanted to be a part of it. So I, it was a challenge. It was something I had never even thought of. I went from playing flag football the first day of not knowing what pads went into what pockets. I mean, cause you still had the things where those huge hip pads where you hit them in. Yep. I thought those went in the thigh. And I remember, <laughs> getting, I remember guys yelling at like, I remember guys making a big deal over it who had already been playing tackle football. It was so embarrassing. So I was just kind of figuring it out. I mean, I was, and I was learning football on the fly too. Um, it was really fun. I had a, had a great time and the guys in the offensive line it was the first time I really kind of got enveloped with those guys, even at that young age. I mean, you're less self-deprecating in high school because you're trying to put on this facade and persona that you're tough, you're tough shit. But um, it was still a really fun group to be a part of. So uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, how did, how did Texas miss on you? And were you disappointed that you weren't recruited by them? Uh, you know, perspective is gained after the years, right? After <laughs> the fact, uh, if, if Texas had come calling, I grew up bleeding burnt orange. Sure. It's just, it was, it was, an, and it was, it was a sweet spot when Vince Young was there. They're yeah. really cool. It was just cool to go to DKR, Dale Cordwell Stadium and watch the Horns play. Um, but yeah, like you said, no Texas offers. Uh, and after the fact, it was actually, it was, uh, Missouri had a lot more success. Uh, they had guys going to the, the pros. Um, it was just, it just seemed like a better gig. We, we moved from, from the big 12, which I had a really fun time playing to the SEC, really cool transition to be a part of. And they just gave me an opportunity to play um, and, and grow. I think part of it for me was I wanted to leave. As much as I love Austin, it's my, one of my favorite places on earth. I'm so proud of being from there. I wanted to have my own experience. I wanted to grow. And I, I, I didn't know if I could do that with that, you know, with that security blanket around, even if I wanted to there, I'd still have the security blanket to go back to. You kind of had to grow up. And, I, and, and when my kids get old enough, I want them to leave. And I think it's just part of the deal. So um, yeah. I, yeah. After the fact, I mean, it's, it is kind of fun to go back there and see, you know, it's hard not to root for him, especially because you're so like, I'm, you know, my heart's with Austin and for a long time, the way the horns would go, the way Austin went now, Austin's got a lot more going on for it now. Um, but it seemed that that was the heartbeat for a while. So if, if they had, if they had, uh, if they had offered, I would have probably gone. So I'm very glad they didn't. Into that. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So we talk about you being a tackle. How do you become a center? How'd that, how'd that work out? I mean, you, you have a tackle body, right? I mean, you got the height, you got, you, well, you got the I weight. Got the height, I got the height. I don't have the arm length or the hand size. Mm. Supposedly. And, uh, and I'll tell you what, especially in this, this league, I don't want to be out in that island, man. That's a, it's, it's not an envious gig to have. Those guys are built different, and uh, you know, yeah, the you know, the trench, you know, the interior has its own set of challenges for sure. Um, but I played a little bit of. Uh, I started out as a guard in Missouri, and then they moved me to center at a very young age. Um, and then I, you know, I had a very tough time snapping the football. Uh, I don't know what it was. I, 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 the few games were all, I mean, I had, I sailed, I probably sailed five to 10 snaps that season. So they, that with injury, they moved me to right tackle from center and probably like towards the end of that 2012 season as our inaugural SEC season. And, uh, and after that, I was right tackle the next year, 2013 and then left tackle 2014. Now I'd put some games together at center. So they knew I could play it. Uh, for some reason, my tiny hands felt better holding that the NFL football um, and just with repetition and, and just kind of going with it and being a little bit older and more mature and just putting, you know, putting more football together to be able to make that transition because uh, it was good. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, what, what did you graduate with? What was your degree in? Uh, weirdly enough, it was hospitality management with emphasis and uh, <clears throat> food and beverage. So, uh, you know, one of the reasons why I went to Missouri was they had a hospitality management. You know, one, one, of my, one of my dreams growing up was managing a Disney resort. I thought that'd be the coolest thing to do. But then you realize it's not as glamorous as you think to get in with some of these, like, so like the, so, I mean, I, I, had, a, I, had, I had an interview with, I somehow got in an interview with just as, as a young kid, uh, maybe my freshman year of college, with uh, the manager of the Four Seasons in Austin, and he just, he or she, I forget, laid it all out for me, and it was a nightmare. And, and as, you know, because you're moving all the time, it's not conducive for a family environment. Uh, I didn't want to get so much into the food part of it, 
but and I'm not a big drinker. I, I do drink uh, casually, um, but it's a personable business. It's an inelastic demand. Me, you know, the the general mantra of you win or lose, you booze. It's kind of it, it goes along with life, right? right like right. it's a personal business. It's it's recession proof. Um, but I really just enjoyed it. And so I did a little uh, internship with Anheuser-Busch in 2013, the summer of as part of the capstone program, really enjoyed it. Um, but to be honest, when people ask what you want to do afterwards, uh, I kind of want to be involved with, um, either the special Olympics. I want to get involved with that or something with the, dis- with the disabled. Like I want to have enough cushion where I work out at the high school over here. And I don't know what it is, but like the last last, last off season, I worked out of this high school. It's just me and on the field. And uh, there's this there's this young man, and his buddy, and they just walk laps around, and they could be slow laps, but they are just they are just chewing the fat, having fun, and they're taking slow laps, rain or shine. I'm like, you know what? That sounds cool, man. That's something I can do. That's something I want to be a part of. So, and I've always had a soft spot for the Special Olympics. Um, so I want to get involved with that, and hopefully, I have enough cushion to just kind of do whatever the hell I want, but that always seems the last few years been my calling. That's very cool, man. Um, so you mentioned, you know, tackles being, you know, sort of a unique breed, but so are centers, right? I mean, you guys, I make the analogy and correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys are sort of like the catcher in baseball, right? You see the whole field. You got to know about everything going on. I mean, the quarterback does too clearly, but you got to know about everything. You're making calls, this, that, and the other thing. Is that, is that, is that a good comparison you as a center compared to a catcher in baseball? Um, yeah, I would say so. If, if any sport's going to make a comparison, I think that would, I mean, in the end, the pitcher as bears the burden, right? So the quarterback bears the burden, right? Right. I'm um, here to assist them as much as possible. And, and I mean, it really goes through preparation from the week with the coaches, put you in positions to have rules, sign rules for passes, sign rules for a run, different protections, and have different looks, understanding what's going to come in third down. And just every play has rules. And so you do the best of your ability, excuse me, to follow those rules and put your guys in positions. Yes, there's certain keys for certain plays. You kind of go through a script. When you hear a play in the huddle, you go through a certain script. I go, okay, what's the snap count? What's the play? What are the indicators I'm looking for? What's the front back to the snap count? Right, you kind of go through that. And then, I mean, certain times, like you said, as much as the center sets the stage for everything, the tackles in the very end see, can see a lot more going on. Usually if they're in a two-point stance or higher up, have more peripherals. Yep. Um, and I, I'll say as the year progressed and the guys got comfortable, we had a really good job of guys echoing calls, echoing what they saw. Our big mantra was no secrets need to be kept. If you think something's going down, cool. I might yell at you. But I'd rather you do that, and I'll, I'll be the first one to apologize to on the field. Like, you know what? That's that's exactly what I want. Don't shy away from that. That's what I need. Because everyone has a role to play. It's not just a center. It can be the right tackle, the right guard. Young guy, you have uh, – oh, there comes, there comes my daughter. Uh, oh, awesome. She, she, she's about to bum rush us. Uh, <laughs> but, um, no, so everyone's got a role to play. But in the end, on the offensive line, the, the kind of the responsibility comes down to the center – to make what even if we're even if there's communication going on boom what i say goes but i need input from the guys and then the ultimate trump cards behind me josh is the ultimate trump card um and uh we just have a good group and they're really cool and everyone took their role seriously and uh and it made life a lot easier and life a lot more fun your, your perspective too is you know we we watch the, we see everything right everything's behind you, right? He's behind you right. or he's on your periphery or the back's behind you or on your periphery or depending on where the play goes. So do you, do you even realize like how, how good Josh is? Do you have to like watch film to be like, holy cow, like I, you did that. You know what I mean? Like, right. Yeah. That's a good question. Um, like I said earlier, perspective is gained after the fact, right? When you're in a game, you're so enveloped and enthralled with your job, what you're supposed to do, how, what's my, what's my task? How do I get my guys going? You score, cool, get off the field. What's the situation? Where are we going to get the ball? Uh, it's putting points on the board. What can we be expecting from the defense at a certain point? And then you kind of take this huge exhale after the game. And uh, at least I do. I'm very, I'm very, you know, up by 20, down by 20. I try to keep the same composure and stuff. And, um, yeah, sometimes you don't really understand the big plays or how 
like so say Micah hides interception in the in the playoff game like all I hear is interception cool we get the ball go down I didn't realize what a hell of a play that was right. so after the fact, like that was insane um so that happens all the time and I think every player would tell you that so I, now I'm a little wound more a little more tight than some guys but that's just that's just how I process during the game have you ever thought about what if and it's really unlikely. I mean, the, the, you're, you have the least odds of probably anybody, even though you did play a little receiver. Have you ever even, has it even crossed your mind what your touchdown dance would look like? Uh, like you said, I, I, I don't even want to, I don't even, I mean, the, the thing that would happen would be is if I score something you know, catastrophic has happened. <laughs> like, like there's a fumble in the end zone, right? Because I can't, like, you can't for like, you, you, you can't crush, advance you know, it advance it right so it's either someone's you know so it'd probably just be catching my breath and realizing what's going on i'm not the kind of guy because if you dance and then some dude just like eats your lunch at dtac like eats your lunch then then what great job you dance maybe you were worried should be more worried worried about now that being said in the moment the holy spirit takes over you never know what you're <laughs> do, right? so that's why i call you know it's the holy spirit takes over you have no idea what's going to happen so I haven't, just because if I do, it's something really bad happens. Right, and and, and you have way too much time on your hands, if if, if that's what you're thinking about. Right? I mean, if it's a reality that there's a legitimate chance you can, why not? Like if I was playing left tackle, or you know, there's a play that I had was going to score, I'd be thinking of something, right? <laughs> Even if it was to do nothing, I was right? still thinking. About it. So, um, and and at left tackle, we have a guy, we have a guy who's very eccentric, and that's not a problem. That's just that's just his that's his. You know, everyone says be who you are. That's his personality. Be on, do your thing, man. For me, if I'm out there, I'm not doing a damn thing. <laughs> that's, that's just the nature. Hey, uh, so the combine's going on. What, what? Tell me about your combine experience. What? Would you bench? Um, how'd you do on the Wonderlick? Yeah, I mean, supposedly I did not horrible at the wonder like you don't they don't tell you the scores somehow the team knows i think it's uh, i don't know it wasn't horrible it wasn't great i mean they get you up at like 6 45 when they get you at 6 45 like all right go take a test so you're already like half asleep <laughs> you're trying to do fraction you know work turn fractions into you know it's um it's kind of an act format if i remember like it you get points from answering every question so uh i think but so that was cool i, I don't remember that the bench was the same day as the wonder like so you you do these these te- well at least my year they have these all these psych you know these psychology tests on and 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 your and your impact tests and all this stuff and then they tell you like hey dude in 15 minutes we're crushing the, the bench go grab some jimmy johns we have some out here so everyone's got these people who are prepared at these fanny packs there's loading pre-workout in you show up juiced and it actually went pretty well i got ended up getting 36 reps wow yeah it, well at I thought I tied for the lead, but they didn't count one. So I was, what I thought was 37, uh, but they counted one as no rep. It was cool. Really enjoyed it. I felt really fun. You know, they put you on the stage and it was just really cool. And then you cheer the guys on and you're all juiced up. And then they tell you to go back because you hadn't finished all this thing. Well, you took enough pre-workout to last you eight hours because you're, you're, you're on no sleep. So I'm like, I got to crush this caffeine. And so then you're going back on these tests like, oh, yeah. And you're taking these psychology tests like, yeah, yeah. And then you crash hard as hell later. But um, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it because everyone's in the same playing field, right? Everyone's got to do the same thing, no matter who's touted or has all these weird rankings. Everyone's got to do the same interviews for the most part. Everyone's got to do the tests. And so everyone's peers. Everyone, the, the slate is clean. It's you and performing. And I really enjoyed that part. Um, so they always talk about, like, the weird questions guys get asked. Can you recall the the weirdest question a team asked you in your interviews? I know it was a long time ago, but yeah, I would. I mean, it wasn't so much a one question. I remember one guy. We were, you know, there's formal interviews and informal interviews, and the, and the informal is just in this huge area where they call the train station, and you're doing this stuff. This really coaches like teaching you how to identify fronts. I'm riding, and this guy keeps hitting my arm accidentally to see how I react. So that was kind of weird. Uh, I remember at one point the Bengals at the time made me do a bunch of addition, like without using, you know, so just simple math. Well, they give you like 10 words to recall. You do that. Then you do math and they like, hey, what are all the states that board the Pacific Ocean? Now recall those words again. That was pretty interesting. Uh, Chip Kelly, the Eagles, you know, he, had his, he had his guy come out. I was like, all right, Chip's in the back room. Don't look at Chip Kelly. 
all this stuff. And they, they, there's like a dark, weirdly dark room, the big screen, and there's a, there's, there's a seat pointed to the screen and chips in behind you. So he's watching you look at the screen. And then it was like a, the sports psychologist from Philadelphia comes in and talks to you. And then you're like, you have to leave. But you don't talk to Chip at all. It was, it was, so that was, that was strange. And um, I mean, most of the teams just put on bad film of you to see him. They're like, okay, tell us <laughs> the, the concept of this play when it's you getting your ass beat. <laughs> and they want to see how you react. And right. like, listen, this is just me getting crushed. <laughs> so everyone was different, unique, and that made, that made a lot of fun. Yeah, that sounds fun. Um, what, what do you see in Andy Reid or of, I, I don't I, I tried to write this question out and I, I still didn't get it right. What do you see of Andy Reid in Sean McDermott? Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, she okay. tried to again. Um, yeah, what, what I see is a guy who who thrives um, in big moments. Uh, really loves a team that's that's com- like a like a puts creates a competitive environment within the team, um, in, in the best ways, right? Uh, they, they they feel like competition. Can you hear her? Yeah, it's all good. If you gotta go, tell me. No, 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 no. She's just she she's yeah she's two years old. Uh, <laughs> so, um, uh, they they speak highly of relationships. They 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 thrive on that, and then we'll do right by the team. And uh, and and I think for the for the most part, they they do a very good job of that. I know some people will pick that kind of stuff apart and say, like, you know, I talk, you know, coaches talk family and, you know. Yeah, well, you know, that's true. I mean, it's true to a point. And I think the people who are realistic about that, uh, you try to make it as much of a family environment as possible, which Sean preaches. And he wants family to come first, which is true. I mean, which I found out in regards to when I had to fly home for 24 hours to have my son. Family trumps all. That family trumps all. Your family trumps all. You try to make it as much of a family environment within when the organization, understanding that um, you can only do it to a certain extent because it is a business. So, uh, and it's and it's an emotional game and it's an emotional uh, business. So that that also that often makes tough conversations even tougher. Yeah. So uh, it's it's hard to remove church and state, especially <laughs> in this business, and it's hard not to get your your emotions into it. Um, so I, I think both of them have done a, a good job of understanding that and, uh, and doing the best they can with that. It's interesting memory too. I'm going to bring this up. Um, and I'm not going down the concussion path at all. Um, it's all good, man. It's part of the gig. Yeah. It's part of my, it's part of my script. And, uh, but, um, they talk about the 24 hour rule, but they also talk about, and I, I'm just. I think I'm being commonsensical when I say this and you, you can totally blow me up if, uh, if I'm hundred percent wrong, oh, you're but, good. But, but no, but people say like, you know, the way the, the way the season ended, they're going to remember that and that's going to be inspiring. And like, I, I maintain there's so much time between then yeah. and the next time you get together that yeah. it's, it's, it's nice. It's a good, nice talking point, but not really realistic. Right. I think that's, I think you're on to something. It's remarkable. I've never heard anyone say that. Uh, you know, you you do have a bad taste in your mouth and you let certain few failures for sure fuel your fire. Um, it's not like you have one thing, one play that sticks out when you're doing your, your third set of bench press. I mean, what you want to do, maybe you take a big step back and say, how did I, you try to do as big picture as possible, right? How did I negatively impact this game? And maybe that's a microcosm of how in the season I fell short, right? And then how can I narrow that gap of this big thing? Like maybe communication was my biggest weakness. And there's one or two plays within that game that were amplified because of the stakes, because of that. Um, and you go back and then you just try to do your best at that and let that f- feel your preparation, let that feel how you practice and stuff. Um, so it's not so much like, I'll remember that fourth and one. Well, maybe I'll remember that I didn't take the right footwork and that, you know, there's, there's more often, there's a, there's a bunch of times where my short yard footwork wasn't good. Well, maybe that's what I can focus on uh, more than anything. Uh, what's your, uh, what's your guilty pleasure or more than one, if you have more than one? Um, a good cigar is a guilty pleasure of mine. Um, 
you know, I had a bad habit when I was younger of chewing tobacco. Uh, you know, that was just something that fatherhood seemed to put on the shelf for good, hopefully. You know, you have your weak moments at times, right? Uh, but cigars, uh, I try to do, I mean, in season is a little different just because you have short turnarounds and um, stuff like that. But I try to have a cigar after every game, if possible, you know, mostly home game. Uh, and then in the off season, every Friday, I try to have a cigar with some, you know, bourbon or something. And then uh, besides that, uh, just a, I love, I thrive on the company I keep. I love a good conversation. I love putting, like I said earlier, putting the phones down, really diving in, having cool, like a kick-ass conversation like this. And just uh, it doesn't have to be about ball. It can be about anything. Yeah. And, uh, and I rem- my family was over this last weekend. We were playing this trivia game. I'm like, when was the last time I did anything with trivia? And I suck ass at it, but it was so much fun. Like it was cool. I was learning. We're going through this stuff. And I was just like, this is a high for me. I'm having fun interacting with people. And that's something that was kind of lost with COVID and slowly coming back. Yeah. So it's cool. I'll tell you what, when you come back to Buffalo, if you need to play games, I think I counted my wife and I are game people. We have somewhere in the neighborhood of like 75 or 80, like board games. Yeah. Forget about card games. I think we have like a hundred games. It's absurd. It's ridiculous. So if you feel like you need a game night, uh, I'm your guy um for that um so going forward um do you have i know josh josh was great at the super bowl in terms of you talk about self-deprecation talking about the 13 seconds and talking about the coin toss and all of that so what say you about both of those what say i um I mean, I think multiple people reiterated the fact that if they'd gone our way, we wouldn't have been saying anything, right? right. <laughs> uh, the unfortunate thing is, especially in my career, I've been on the butt end of a few of these. Yeah. And that's just okay. Uh, I think if any change needs to be made, it's the postseason. But end season, I don't think anything needs to be changed. Yeah. I mean, the coin flip, it's its iconic. It's cool. I, I, I think it's – yeah, it comes down to chance kind of, but it's also the offense is out there and the defense has a chance or the, you know, the opposing defense and our offense has a chance. And, um, if anything, I think uh, the state, when the stakes are at its highest, maybe is when the rules need to be changed. Yeah, for, for sure. Um, so what, what you're off season, it's short. I mean, football has now become a year round sport, right? You're, how, how often are you working out in the off season? Uh, it takes a lot longer to get back into it every year, so, uh, <laughs> especially with two kids. Um, yeah. Right now, it's just three times a week with those other days. Like, yeah. Yeah. So maybe it's like Monday, Wednesday, Friday right now. And Tuesday, Thursday, I get worked on by a physical therapist, jump in the sauna, just we're trying to take walks with the kids. And, um, it seems to be doing the, the trick right now. And, and you, because you're an interior lineman, I mean, my gosh, you're, you are – part of contact on every single play you are on the field right so be, be, well, like yeah well um, but my, my my point is they talk in the nfl about recovery time and about, and about how you know famously guys will say i'm not i'm not good until the following thursday i mean is that is that is that true for you guys or a lot uh, of you guys especially you guys yeah there's something to it um i i do think your body gets calloused especially in a season, those first few weeks in training camp, it, it seems to really smack you in the face. Um, yeah, it also depends on if guys don't want to take anti-inflammatories or not. Totally, like, totally uh, understood. Um, everyone's got their own routine, kind of what they put in their bodies. Um, all these are, you know, mitigating factors. So, uh, yeah, and it also depends on the position. There's so many variables that play into it. Um, but yeah, it's, and it also kind of depends on the workload. If, you know, coach is really good about listening to the sports science people about the data driven stuff, like the stuff you can't dispute. And this is the guys that like this guy put a lot of miles on. He needs a break. Well, you could push this guy a little bit. And we do that as a team. So uh, I, I think it speaks highly of the sports science department, the, medical staff, the weight room staff, and the, and the coaches in general, that this team stays relatively healthy. I'm with besides, you know, some freak accidents like Tredavious's. Uh, how long have you had your beard? Uh, dude, I have no chin underneath this. So, I mean, I do, it's honestly like, it's so like, that's like my, my chin is right there. Do you see that? That's my chin, dude. So I, I've had this beard 
as long as I've had no chin, which is as long as I can grow this damn thing. Um, it just accentuates a chin line, which you need as a fat dude. <laughs> well, hello, guilty. <laughs> Where I think everyone, you know, that BMI is so stupid. But uh, yeah, what are you gonna do? Yeah. Hey, listen, I got bumped up in the COVID line because I was obese. I'm telling you, dude, there's no, something, something, nothing wrong with having big titties on a dude. You know? <laughs> right and then, and then your bald head. So I, I, I kind of want to do it. My wife is like, absolutely not. You're not doing it. No. So did you do it? Let me see. For- let me see what let me see what you're rocking with. Oh, you got time, dude. Oh yeah, hell no. Yeah, here's what I'm saying. If you have it, don't do it. Okay. It's it uh, do it as a lot. It's fun to do, kind of. But then if you're really or if it's receding and you do it, you, some of your hair will just give up. That's true. Your hair will just be like, you know what? I'm done. I'm tired. You the rest, of you guys can go. I'm done. I'm, <laughs> For me, it was a necessity since I've been 21 years old. It just took me till I was a rookie and the vets were like, you're shaving your damn head, right? And uh, I, just as a rookie, you didn't have a choice. And it was the best thing that ever happened. They were looking out for me. Right. Like, I've been looking, you know, uh, it's something I'll do for the rest of my life. And and you still had to pick up the tab at offensive line dinner, didn't you, on your rookie training camp? My Oh, well, tra- yeah. Well, in Kansas City, it was breakfast. So oh, okay. I, I spent a boatload on breakfast twice a week and then a little rookie dinner because the guys knew I'd spent you know, my, my left, you know what, on breakfast. <laughs> um, this has been great, man. I, I, I'm, I've already kept you way too long. Um, no, I got, that's cool. I got, if, I got a few more minutes if, you're, if you got any more questions. Yeah, no, sure. Um, so obviously, I, and again, I, I'll go back to the concussion thing. Ali Marpet, you probably saw this. Retired. He's 28. He's still a young man um, because he just wants to walk away healthy. I mean, does that, in terms of creeping into your brain? Right. Does, uh, well, you know, the thing about Allie was we trained together the combine. We were, or the pro, you know, the, you know, the combine prep. We were roommates of the combine no prep. No kidding. I didn't know that. This yeah. is interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, he's a cool dude. You know, it really comes from a cool family uh super smart got a lot going for him and football i think just really worked out for him well uh but he would have been fine i would have been fine let me say if football didn't go well for him and it did and now he's got this this huge you know it's not like i talk to him all the time um but uh dude he he's he's been great and uh so yeah does it creep into your mind um absolutely you're a human being it's, it's a decision you have to make with your family and everyone's decision is different. Um, for me, I'm in a very comfortable place where I'm at. I feel very healthy. Um, but if my wife said anything differently or my family, people in my corner, it'd be a decision you have to make. It's a group decision now, especially since you're married yeah. with kids. So, um, uh, yeah, it, of course it creeps in your mind, but like where I'm at personally, I'm in an awesome spot and I feel really comfortable moving forward and the quality of my life from right now on is going to be great. What, what do you love most about the bills? What I love most about the bills. Uh, I love the locker room most about the guys. Uh, the locker room has been cool since day one. Um, you know, I, I think I'd be remiss to say that when I signed there in free agency, it's not like I was seeking to go there. Um, it's never, it wasn't, a, you know, a, I, I was just had these preconceived notions of the place, right? All you hear about. And uh, I, man, was I proven wrong about the town, about the, the culture. And uh, it's been such a privilege and a blessing to be with this group, being a part of that community. Um, but the guys by were the favorite part by far. Yeah. Yeah. Bill's Mafia is pretty unique, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Unique is a clever way for Sam lighting themselves on fire. <laughs> jumping in through, jumping through tables. That right. It's very unique. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't think you'll ever be going through a table. Will you, I mean, you know, after you're done playing perhaps? Uh, no, hell no. No, I'm going to drop 50 pounds immediately to go skiing, but that's about it. Good for no. you. Yeah. And it's, yeah. Will we ever see you do a Ryan Fitzpatrick and come back to a Bill's playoff game shirtless after you're done playing? 
Uh, you might see me come back hammer drunk. No, I, don't know if you will, but I don't know if I'll be shirtless. I'll be smacked, baby. Yeah, I don't know about I don't know about shirtless. You'll see me back whenever that time comes. <laughs> we're not we're not wishing for it anytime soon. Let's yeah, let's be either. let's be completely clear. Yeah, um, sure. it, was your wife your? Uh, did you meet in college? Was she your your uh, childhood sweetheart? Like, how'd you guys meet? We met in college. She was a senior and I was a freshman. She robbed me from the cradle. Wow. Yeah, no, it was it was really cool for me and my friends. It was not cool for her friends. Her, right. <laughs> but she stuck through with it. And uh, and um, so she's known me from my from from the very bottom of, uh, you know, just growing up. You know, she met me when I was 18 and um, we've created this kick ass life together. And she's been my buddy ever since. And, you know, we grew up a lot. I, I grew up as, you know, not only in a relation, as a relationship, as a person in a relationship, but as a person. Um, so it's really cool to see that. And she's been my, she's been, she's my best friend. So, and, and, and what I do, what that does is it makes me feel uh, really bad for people who, who are together and, and, and they're not best friends. Like that, that just doesn't, it doesn't equate with me. And, and I, I don't get it. Yeah. I hear that. Um, I think my wife and I are best friends, so that works out. There really you go. Well. See, We're very happy. Ask, man. And it's not I, perfect all the time. It's not no, I mean. certainly not. Certainly not. Um, what about the what about guys? Like, do you notice differences? Now, granted, the, the married guys might be a little bit older than the ones that aren't. But do you do you notice differences between the married guys and the single guys in terms of? Oh yes. Like, I, I guess is maturity the right word? I don't even know. No, I wouldn't say maturity as much as uh, it's just different phases of your life. Yeah. Um, I mean, I remember when I was way younger, I would drink just to have the courage to socialize with girls. And so I would drink often. And then when I got with my wife, it was just like, I don't, you know, that's, that's my buddy. This is, this is, you know, this is who I'm going home to. Like, I don't need to get hammered. It's just like, it's just different ways. When you're going out, you're going out for different things. I'm going out for, you know, my wife and I are going out to pick up a kick-ass charcuterie board. When these guys are going out, they're going out to mangle and do all this stuff. And that's not a problem by any means. That's just different parts yeah. of the gig. So it's not so much maturity as it is just different stages. I've met plenty of mature single guys. And I'm not saying everyone drinks just to, just to have, you know, to have courage to speak to the opposite sex. Uh, sometimes it's to just have a good time, but you know, uh, I went around the bush there, but no, that's all right. Yeah. So much in maturity as it is just, yeah, that's, yeah, that's fine. We, we got a, a little too deep that I want to do anyway. That was a, that was, it was a good question, but it was, it was boring. Oh, that's cool. Um, uh, <laughs> well, let's see. So we're, we're, we're doing, we're shooting this on a Thursday. So tomorrow's Friday. So you're going to get a fish fry where? Uh, my wife will grab a fish fry at, uh, and bring it home. There's, there's a local church that we're going to send her okay. to the school someday. So nice. It's called St. Michael's, which weirdly enough is, a, is the name of the same high school I went to completely different place. Um, so we'll grab that, come home. And, uh, and, uh, it was, I mean, my, you know, my, my wife was my proxy going to Ash Wednesday mass. She was able to, uh, so we had a little head bump. I don't know if that was, uh, <laughs> It was good, but uh, it's good, dude. That's I awesome. Hate doing, I hate doing this to you, pal, but I do have to go that's, grab that's my That's cool. My no, 100%. Uh, it was great, and I'm glad I'm glad we could do it. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. And uh, don't be a stranger. We'll be in touch, all right? Well, I appreciate it, pal. Thank you. Thank you, brother. It was a lot of fun. Thank you.